materials for the energy of the future. If you go back and um, you read uh, some popular uh, you know, novels by Jules Verne, there was uh, the vision for uh, using water as a, as a fuel was already there in the, in the 19th century. We have come a long way since, uh, since then. Athanasios Konstantopoulos leads a European project called Hydrosol. Its uh, goal was to mm, produce a method, uh, or develop a method for producing hydrogen from exclusively renewable um, resources such as the sun, solar energy and water. Hydrogen has long been heralded as the clean energy carrier of the future. Hydrogen has a very good possibility to help us with global warming. You can produce hydrogen with any energy source you're having. You can use, produce it from, from wood, you can produce it from biomass, you can produce it from oil, you can produce it from gas, from bio oil, from biogas, from water with power. From water with power? But where would that power come from? These days we use fossil fuels for almost all our energy needs. It's clear that an alternative has to be found. Hydrogen could be the answer, but for the moment, even much of the hydrogen we use comes from fossil fuels too. Athanasios Konstantopoulos is a specialist in catalytic converters for car engines. He's adapted that technology to produce hydrogen in a green way. He overcame some major technical challenges. As you know, hydrogen is the most abundant species in, in, in the world. However, you don't find it free because it is highly reactive. If you want to produce hydrogen renewably, water must be your raw material, let's say, your starting material. Um, but water molecule, the water molecule is one of the most stable molecules. It's very difficult to, to, to split it. In our approach, we use directly the direct thermal content of the solar energy, and uh, we can convert water vapor into hydrogen in uh, a solar reactor, almost reaching efficiencies, uh, as we estimate, in, in, in full scale on the order of, of 70%. The hydrosol device was developed in Greece with partners from Britain, Denmark and Germany. It's now being scaled up from laboratory level. In theory, it's remarkably simple, using just solar energy and water. You can see here a little piece from that uh, reactor. It is um, a ceramic body that has uh, many channels that are providing a very large surface area. In these channels, there is a a particular uh, material, uh, we call it nanomaterial, um, that it is coated. And uh, through this reactor, we have the water vapor that it is um, flowing. Um, we can um, increase the temperature on this reactor by concentrating solar radiation with a set of mirrors, and uh, then uh, um, exploding temperature that we get from, uh, from the solar energy, we can watch the water molecule being split and hydrogen flowing through. So uh, in a way, this is um, the simplest uh, setup that one can think uh, to have a, a reactor with no moving parts where um, water vapor flows from one side and then hydrogen exits from the other side. We think that renewable hydrogen in the future um, most likely will mean solar hydrogen coming from a thermochemical process like hydrosol. Once the gas has been isolated, it has a huge range of possibilities. Strict environmental laws that will demand zero emission vehicles are driving investment from car makers. What is even more exciting about hydrogen is that you can put it into very many devices. You can put hydrogen in internal combustion engines as we do here. You can put hydrogen into, uh, use it for, uh, with a fuel cell, using it as a battery, on cameras, on, on PCs. In fuel cells, hydrogen generates electricity through an electrochemical reaction. It can be used in other ways too. 
In this car, it's burnt in a modified internal combustion engine. The difference is that this vehicle isn't just driven by petrol, but mainly hydrogen. That's why it's got two tanks. This car is easy to fill up like any other vehicle. Here you have a button for switching between the two so you can change modes from hydrogen to petrol. Hydrogen goes through this pipe into the motor and under this cover is the area where the hydrogen is sucked into the motor and burnt. There are huge technical and logistical hurdles to overcome in delivering hydrogen to users. Berlin is at the forefront of research with two hydrogen filling stations open to the public. They produce hydrogen on site using water electrolysis and distribute hydrogen made from fossil fuels. The biggest challenge is the production of hydrogen in a neutral environmental context so that no is produced. In a fuel cell, hydrogen goes in and water comes out. It seems very clean, but that isn't the whole story. To be truly emission-free, the hydrogen must come from renewable sources to begin with. Solar hydrogen production offers a solution. Uh, the fuel cell technology is on a certain path, evolution path, and um, uh, these fuel cells will have to have hydrogen in order to, to operate. Uh, if this hydrogen comes from a hydrogen life process, this will be solar hydrogen, so it will be um, effectively a way of getting the solar energy and, and uh, run uh, as a vehicle using hydrogen as a carrier of that energy.